Zoom says, I'm recording. Hello, everyone. My name is Dee. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. This is your weekly astrology report for the fourth quarter of this incredibly potent lunar cycle that started with the new moon in Taurus on April 22nd. So we're now in officially the fourth quarter. It is May 15th, 2020. This report is actually for the 14th through the 22nd of May. And we're going to talk about the third quarter square that actually happened yesterday. I had had released a video already and I was given feedback that there was feedback in the sound. And so I'm on the Bluetooth headphones and uh, hopefully this will come across with less interference. So we're going to talk about the third quarter square, how it's setting up the rest of this lunar cycle. We're going to talk about the moon in Pisces because that's what's happening now and throughout the weekend. There are some significant transits. We also have now Jupiter is officially retrograde. It, uh, Jupiter stationed retrograde yesterday with the third quarter square. So now all of these planets here in this zone, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto are all retrograde now. And so going back over all that Capricorn energy that um, has just been on on our minds and right in front of our faces um, for a while now. And it's certainly dynamic that's not going away anytime soon, at least until all of these are direct again and they have all moved into Aquarius. And that's gonna really be, it feels like the true, the true step into the Aquarian age. But in the meantime, we're focusing on right now and how this week is unfolding. So the moon is getting darker. It is starting to lose her potency. For her, you know, the light that she's getting from the sun really illuminates what she represents and it's getting darker. She's getting darker. That means things are going back into the shadows. They're becoming more mysterious. They're becoming more watery. It is more about our intuition and um, our emotional drives without so much reflection from the sun, which is our conscious projection of our um personalities right and so in this moment of square there are two of them in every lunar cycle you have the first quarter which is the crisis in action and then the third quarter which is what we have here the crisis in consciousness and there's no way to really resolve a square as far as i can tell i think the best thing you can do with a square aspect at any point is to recognize where the tension is lean into that tension and learn as much as you can from that tension because there's not much you can do with a 90 degree angle other than just be with it so you know fixed air aquarius fixed earth and taurus and um you know taurus is all about the natural unfolding and the natural fulfillment and we've really been put to the test in terms of what is it that we um, have trust and faith in, and do we trust and have, do we have faith and trust in the nature, in nature, in the natural process unfolding? And every, every day with a new, a new degree of Taurus that the sun has gone through, we get a different manifestation of this really fixed, very stable, steady energy in Taurus. It has a, you know, a lot to do with resources and the physical environment around us. Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus. It's really about what feels good, the relationships that feel good, where we find safety and comfort, um, and the resources we need, the world around us, you know, and it's amazing that how simple of an idea it is that the world really does, the earth, the planet itself, herself really does provide everything everything that we need and if we're willing to trust that process including our evolution and our um, spiritual evolution so we've been you know given lots of opportunities to see if we can stay the course through this natural unfoldment and so there's a big pile up here coming in gemini and that's going to be a big theme in the next cycle the lunar cycle and for the new moon we'll talk a lot about that but so the square here is interesting we natural unfolding and then aquarius is really about the future and it's about the collective future it's innovative and also rebellious it is the it is the water bearer right aquarius is the water bearer is the is the figure that brings the nourishment and the water to the collective um, the emotional bonding and awareness but it's still a very intellectual aspect you know you're using your mind and Aquarius can really see the future. 
because it's there's not there's not all these other overlying or extraneous aspects to consider. Aquarius is very focused and has like a laser beam focus, and because it's so futuristic, sometimes it's Aquarius can be kind of an outcast and have a hard time for a figure that is completely focused on the collective and the collective health and unity aquarius as an individual can oftentimes be very separated seemingly from the collective or the community just because their perspective is always like two or three steps ahead of everybody but this is how we evolve in in our lives and so with late aquarius this is very much about stepping into our future selves and the mastery of this um, very keen and very sharp mental um, acuity, really, and being able to see through, you know, cut through everything like a laser to get to the point. And the point is always the collective um, health and um, future of, you know, of all of us, of, in this case, it'd be humanity on this planet. And this degree in particular is is kind of about like we can, you know, evolving some aspect about ourselves beyond the normal, beyond the normal framework of nature somehow. And this could be like enhancement through technology. You could see it as a mutation in nature that makes something more robust than it normally would be. And then that gives something an advantage. And, and when we have the moon here, it's really like emotionally yesterday, I think we really felt this tension between the natural unfolding of this collective, beautiful, peaceful world that we can all be part of, and the emotional drive almost to like um, w evolve very quickly and to kind of break out into this um, futuristic, egalitarian utopic society but it's very um it would it would mean in this particular case it would mean um like taking a couple steps forward in evolution like bypassing something or having some sort of uh mutation that allows an advantage in some way we're just ain't honestly what it comes down to emotionally i think we're just so ready to like you know go into the next chapter um, for humanity and like evolve like we're just so ready to get there and this is more about hey let's like let it naturally unfold and again there's no way to resolve this tension you just have to feel it the thing is the moon is moving quickly and so she moves past it very quickly yesterday comes into um comes into pisces yesterday and actually lines up here you go lines up with mars which you know there we go lines up with mars where two degrees two degrees pisces i want to make sure whoops have the right degree here sorry bear with me here yeah, two degrees. Now, it's interesting that they met up in this two degree thing, this two degrees of Pisces, because this is really about caution. And, you know, I talked about this on the live today about how this two degrees of Pisces is a squirrel that's hiding from hunters. And it's the idea that, um, it's the idea that when you are vulnerable as you are in Pisces, because remember Pisces, is all about the feels it's all about all the feels that's all it is, is feels in pisces there's nothing else but feels like this is the realm of the empath this is the realm of the psychotic person because everything and anything is a possibility in pisces it's just the diffused solution that everything dissolves back into so Pisces is very dreamy and watery and loving and artistic, but it's also completely delusional area. And Mars coming through here, you know, Pisces is also about victimhood and martyrdom because there are no boundaries in Pisces. And so we are all one in the same in Pisces, but there's also um, a sense, you know, Pisces is the Christ 
was was the era of Christ and you know unconditional love and 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 brotherhood spiritual communion you know the disciples the that and and the emotional aspect of the the community was a big part of it but remember Jesus was in fact a martyr in some ways that's kind of the way the story is at least told and as we're coming in now to the age of Aquarius it's a different it's a different resonance it's definitely much more futuristic it's much more about the collective um and it's less about the emotional attachment or you know it's in the same way as pisces it's no boundaries but pisces it's all diffused into an ocean and aquarius it's a laser it's a laser beam it's a point in space that you're heading forward and we'll go at like warp speed and so it's just a totally different aspect but in the meantime we do have neptune here and that means that the moon is also over the weekend going to hit neptune so this was yesterday and so the moon meeting up with mars in this two degrees of like caution and you don't really you're not sure you can trust because that's the aspect of plus that's why there is a martyrdom and a victim um, archetype associated with Pisces because for as much as the co-mingling of everybody in a functioning community is the first degree of Pisces the second degree the opposition almost to that is I have to be cautious and protect myself because I am vulnerable to everything around me as well if there are no boundaries then there's nothing there to protect me either and that's an interesting place for Mars and the moon to meet because the moon is very vulnerable as well, represents our internalized emotional landscape. But Mars is also very protective and wouldn't really hide very well. But then as I talked about in the, my live today, that there are certain animals that are very tough and very um, fierce in their own ways and they are hunters, but they also survive really well by being silent and observant and being aware of their environment and that's a strategy that mars could use potentially depending on how you you know how mars aspects your chart and how you know your relationship with the divine masculine that's the thing it's, it just depends on how it gets expressed so emotionally yeah we might be feeling as of yesterday feeling very cautious and vulnerable to like put ourselves out there but mars at the same time also sees the benefit of that in a strategic way and um, might be able to kind of shelter us in some sort of like courage, you know, it's interesting. So the moon is going, and then also, like I said, Jupiter, I'm not sure if I did say it, Jupiter is now retrograde as well as of yesterday. And then the sun also, while square with, the moon was in trying to Pluto retrograding Capricorn. If that's not um, an invitation for what Pluto is doing, which is going back over all of this stuff that it already excavated and it's gonna get even deeper now. It's gonna go back and be like, okay, let's make sure I got everything. I'll go back with a fine tooth, tooth comb or a better shovel, um, a stronger light, you know, to get in there whatever it is, Pluto's like making sure that it roots it all out for sure. And then so the sun trining it at this degree of this beautiful, vast collective park, it's just kind of like, yes, everything that Pluto is doing all this like deep excavation work is very much in a foundational relationship with this collective that's unfolding very naturally. It was really, really nice and I thought hopeful, even though things are certainly heating up and it's really easy to get stuck in the fear. So let's look at the rest of the week. I have it written out here for you. And that way you can look at the chart and you can look at the notes and have a sense of what's going on in both realms. So this is today, the 15th. The moon is now in Pisces, like I said. Um, and Mercury is now in Gemini and is in sextile to Chiron in Aries. So this is another degree I wanted to talk about because this is coming up pretty big as we move into more and more of the Gen Gemini dynamic, especially if Mercury in Gemini, it's home territory. The mind is at home now. The, the planet that rules the mind is in its home territory. There is going to be so much 
um, in the way of information, communication, data, uh, just the way we learn things, um, the, the filter that we each have, this is all being activated so much with mercury here. It's stimulated, it's supported, and it's very active. So we do here, here we have mercury in Gemini, and then is going to, let's see here, is eventually going to sextile, right? 60 degree angle with Chiron and Aries. Now, Chiron recently moved into a new degree. This means there's a new Sabian symbol. And I think it's really important to share it, especially, like I said, because we're moving into this, here we go, this Gemini energy. And Chiron is the wounded healer for all of us. So it is the victim savior dichotomy that we are all meant to heal and transcend so that we feel, so that we are empowered and sovereign beings and that we are decidedly transcending the need to have a victim and a savior at all. Um, this is the work we all do. We all have Chiron in our chart. And so collectively, Chiron is moving into this area of nine to eight to nine degrees of Aries. Now, the Sabian symbol for this is the symbol of a crystal ball. And it's specifically the person who is looking at the crystal ball, a crystal gazer. And when you do so, any kind of divination, any kind of intuitive work, um, in, in, divination or reading, scrying, whatever divination or intuitive work you do, you know that a lot of it is you get these impressions, you get these images, you get these holistic pictures, very much part of the right, your right brain is activated. And it's the job of the practitioner to then find a way to interpret or at least connect the symbols that they're seeing in the imagery in the holistic picture to some sort of um, message or some sort of idea or set of thoughts strung together. So when we're talking about Chiron, again, victim and savior, they can only have, you have to have them both for them to, you know, if one exists, the other by proxy exists. So in this degree, we're talking about the ability to see the big picture and also be able to interpret what the whole big picture is, the, the, full, the full intuitive message that we see. And when we talk about victim and savior, we're talking about a dichotomy. And in this particular situation, where I think we're struggling potentially is the idea that we could at the same time see the big picture and then just like the intuitive or the psychic, focus on the details at the same time. We can do both of these things. It's that right now we are being led to believe that we cannot. And I do believe that this is going to be some of the work over the next couple of weeks with Chiron in this degree of, tr of, of working on this dynamic. So with Mercury in Gemini sextile, you know, supportive but needs activation, right? That's the sextile, the 60 degree angle. What is nine degrees? of Gemini. Let's find out, shall we? I feel like I wrote it down somewhere. And I'm sure it's going to be, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Nine degrees of Gemini. Oh, a quiver filled with arrows. Man's or P humanity's aggressive relationship to natural life as a basis for survival and conquest. Oh my gosh, there we go. So this is just a part of the journey in Gemini because you're consistently dealing with the mental constructs of opposition through Gemini. And every single degree is gonna have a manifestation along our journey into this. And so this very much, this aggressive tendency, this, this quiver of arrows that we can pull out and shoot and you know Chiron was a centaur and that's definitely what they did it's a very Sagittarius archer thing they were archers and they definitely shot arrows it it depends on what the uh, target is let's just put it that way so this is what's happening today so already we're feeling this our ideas as potential weapons and if we are depending on what the target really is. Is the target our uh, ego? In which case then we can use our discipline and our rational, um, critical 
thinking skills um, and be able to see the big picture as well as be able to see the details. Or we can be um, caught into what we perceive as our enemy and use these arrows in a way to um, you know, and, and feel and feel vindicated and supported in some way by this, like, no, if you see the big picture, then you're missing the details. And it's like, no, if you see the details, you're not seeing the big picture of the spiritual awakening. Both of those, that's, that's, that's where we get caught. And so it really depends on what the target is for this. This is the big one for today, this Mercury and Gemini sextile Chiron and Aries. And you'll see is the moon, the moon is going to come around and conjunct with Chiron by the end of the weekend. And so then we're going to have a really emotional sense of what this actually feels like. Right now, this is just the mind really supporting whether or not we want to move past that. So then we go on to the Saturday the 16th. This is still our moon in Pisces. It has now conjunct Neptune. Neptune at this degree has really been, um, really been challenging us to surrender and to trust this process like completely and if you are you have strong neptune you have strong pisces or if this is aspected in your chart in a specific way this might have you might have not had a hard time but i think we're all being tested right now and when the moon is conjunct with this on saturday we're emotionally also going to be like okay so there be, might be a nice moment where we either come into it going oh I can see, I can feel, I can feel what this feels like to surrender and have hope in this situation. Or we can just be completely delusional and then emotionally get pulled into that too. This depends on how you deal with Pisces. It's really, it's really about how you as an individual sovereign being interact with these potentials here. But I will say this degree where Neptune has been, has been really about surrendering and trusting this process very deeply and emotionally and spiritually. So my, tomorrow, the moon will certainly give us an emotional um, experience of that on a personal level. Right after that, though, she's going to look at that. She's going to square Venus retrograde in Gemini. This has not been easy unless you already have a retrograde or you have strong Venus in your chart, maybe. If you relate to uh, Gemini energy very well. Um, might be a little bit easier, but she's going back all over this. And so this is like a little bit of a sneak preview of the Venus, or I mean Neptune squaring Venus in a couple of days where this trust and this white hope is going to square directly this woman, this woman that is in a tumultuous labor demonstration. It's coming. Like things are heating up for sure. And the opposition is getting stronger and stronger. Like the feeling of opposition is growing and growing and it's not going to, it's just going to be more pronounced with Venus in retrograde in Gemini because she's going back over territory that she's already been in and she's either annoyed by this or she's disturbed by what she's learning. So it depends. Or she's happy to go back over it if she's um, strongly you know, has a lot of strong connections to other air signs. It just depends. It just depends. But it will be tumultuous and it'll really put this, this Venus squaring Neptune is going to really put that trust and faith to the test. In the meantime, the moon is going to square Venus and retrograde. And so it's going to be kind of like a little emotional sneak preview of what that big, that big energy is going to feel like. So keep that Saturday. I would keep an eye on that. Sunday, we have the 17th. I feel like this is a big day. Not only is the sun really starting to conjunct now with the Pleiades, um, 27, 28, 29, Taurus, roughly. So the moon has now moved into Aries. That means it's going to conjunct Chiron by the end of Sunday. So there's that emotional experience of the victim savior mentality when it comes to our ability to see the holistic picture versus the interpretation of that. That's really important. Um, we don't have to be, it doesn't have to be one or the other. I think this is a really important uh, piece of information to keep going back to. And then the moon is going to by the end of Sunday, the moon will come to this point and really show us what's going on um, emotionally, like where we're emotionally um, 
connected to this dynamic? Are we able to actually transcend it and be able to look in the crystal ball and see the details? Or are we emotionally still struggling with that and feel like we have to be on one side or the other? Because I really don't think we do need to be on one side or the other. And this is our work right now. But before that, so the sun is in Taurus is going to be pretty much starting to conjunct the Pleiades. This is a big deal every year. This is very magical time in a lot of indigenous cultural traditions that are connected to the Pleiades. This is kind of like when the portal opens in some ways. And so we're going to have this beautiful aspect that is the sun trine Jupiter is one of the most beautiful things you can get in a chart and um, one of the most beautiful aspects you can experience. Sun is our full expression of who we are, our most beautiful sovereign self, and then you have Jupiter. There's the good abundant, abundance and good fortune and luck and expansion and leadership. Uh, the sun <laughs> sun's gonna, over the Pleiades is gonna try in Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is retrograde in Capricorn, but I do still think this is a really nice um, configuration to happen, especially with the sun conjunct the Pleiades. I think we're going to see an expansion on some leadership within. I think people are really going to start expanding their own internalized leadership. And they this and this degree in particular with the sun is the ability to um, expand your consciousness beyond what would normally be your biological limitations. I just think this is so beautiful and it's going to be an internalized experience for a large population. Like people are going to start feeling, um, they're going to wake up. That's really what this feels like. It's like a really big moment of awakening, but it's internalized at first. And then we'll eventually um, filter or ripple out into the external. But by the end of Sunday, I think, and this is when we're supposed to get solar weather as well, Sunday or Monday. So this weekend is just, and again, the moon is coming into Aries. Wow, that's really going to um, stimulate our emotional drive to um, self-resource and to uh, uh, meet our own meet our own needs in some ways and to advocate for ourselves. Emotionally, we're going to be in that space at the same time. So this is really lovely. Um, just in general. So this is just the weekend. And I really wanted to speak um, more about the weekend since I won't be reporting um, during the weekend. So just keep in mind that where we're headed, there is there is this beautiful moment on Sunday. And then from there, actually, the moon then moves um, into sextile with Saturn retrograde He's still in Aquarius. And so we're also going to really be encouraged to use that emotional um, drive towards advocating for ourselves as part of our our toolbox of learning how to deal with crises, um, which is where Saturn's been in two degrees of Aquarius, is, is teaching us how to fortify ourselves within the midst of whatever crisis happens within the collective. Um, and it's been really teaching us really teaching us Saturn is relentless and because there's no way around Saturn. So um, where are we looking at? That was the weekend. So Monday, the moon is still in Aries, not really much going on, except the sun now is still conjunct the Pleiades. We got 28, 29. Um, the moon is moving through here. This is Monday. It feels like after the weekend, it'll be this big like, whew, and then after that, it'll kind of contract a little bit. So Monday, Tuesday, the 19th, you'll see here we got the moon still in Aries. Um, and then it's going to square <laughs> Jupiter and Pluto retrograde. So wow, um, that's going to be, this is going to be a considerable amount of tension because these huge energies are so stable and so strong and so full of leadership and intensity. And now they're going retrograde. So they're more obvious. Um, and this moon here, this is just us emotionally. This is a very transient experience because the moon moves so quickly. And so there will be, a, there'll be some flares definitely by Tuesday. And then the moon will move into Taurus. Let's look at the hours here. 
And the moon will move into Taurus. Maybe. <laughs> And then it'll, the moon will move into Taurus and then we'll then be square to Saturn. So the moon is going to square all of these characters on Tuesday. And the sun is now at the last degree of Taurus, so it's still conjunct the Pleiades. So this is going to be quite a day. Not only is the moon going to change into the sign that it, she's going to be dark in, which is the, you know, right before the new moon, we now have a dark moon in Taurus. Um, she's going to square all of this. There's going to be a lot of emotional blockage, I think, on Tuesday. Wednesday is the 20th. This is when the sun enters Gemini. This is great. Um, so before that, the moon conjunct Uranus at, um, let's see what degree that actually happens in. Because this is this is when the energy picks up again. I think Tuesday there'll be a lot of emo emotional blockage. Um, there'll be a lot of frustration. There'll be a lot of like wanting to. Um, there's a lot of temper flares and tantrums and just a lot of just like wow, what is happening? And just meeting consistently being blocked by Jupiter, being blocked by Pluto, being blocked by Saturn. Um, no matter what. And so the moon, okay, so Wednesday, the moon is now in Taurus. We've already established that. Um, it is the day that the sun enters Gemini. And so this is when things are going to start picking up again. It's on the 20th. And the, there we go. The moon will then conjunct Uranus, which is looking ahead to the future, by the way. Um, this degree that Uranus is in is about, it's like a sleigh without any snow around it. Like you're, you're preparing and Uranus loves to look to the future. So if you need some help being able to access the timeline that's true, which is we are um, already in this 5D consciousness, for instance, you know, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and it's good energy to tap into. It also is, um, kind of opening our eyes because we are in Taurus still to be very real with ourselves about what's coming down the pipeline and to not ignore what is a natural unfolding of where we're at right now that's I just feel like that needs to be said is like there's Uranus is seeing into the future so the moon conjuncts Uranus at this point so I think we'll get an emotional sense of what that is by Wednesday the moon the sun is now in Gemini and Venus. This is also when Venus squares Neptune. Remember I talked about Venus, the tumultuous labor demonstration, the protest here, the, the conflict with social privilege and the revolt against it. That's where Venus is and um, in square to this, we're really gonna be feeling again, this, the tension between trusting this plan and being able to um, actually speak out and, and provide and stand in our power against the social privilege that we know is is responsible for most of the world being where it is in terms of ep economic devastation and uh, health care anyway that's getting off topic here kind of anyway so the moon conjuncts uranus the sun enters gemini and then venus I, the wednesday is going to be again so the, the weekend will be a very nice, like, you know, figure some, you know, feel things out. I think with the moon and Pisces, we're just going to feel everything. Um, and then it'll kind of peak on Sunday and Monday into Tuesday will be kind of a contraction. And then it's going to start building again. Wednesday's a big day. Let's see what we got here. And then we're going to move on to Thursday. That's another kind of contraction period where the moon is in Taurus still, but there's not a ton of aspects. And then we get to Friday, which is the new moon in Gemini. Not only is it the new moon in Gemini, the Mercury conjuncts Venus in Gemini. The sun is going to trine Saturn in Aquarius. Um, and then Mercury is going to square Neptune at the same degree that uh, Venus had squared Neptune just two days prior, and then the new moon. So, and this will have its own content, and this will have content about the whole lunar cycle and what it means. This is just to kind of give you an idea of like where everything is going to end up. And so we start here. I'm going to show you. 
15th, 14th. Here's the 14th. That was the third quarter square. And then we go everything. You see how everything is moving around. So we get to here. Everything is now in. Don't be fooled where these things are. They're all right here. They're all crammed into this area. And then you have Uranus here, Chiron here, Mars and Neptune here, and then these guys. So a lot of Gemini energy coming up. So hmm, everything you need to get a hold of me and Catalyst Energies. If you're interested in booking a reading or energy work session, um, the readings are still by donation right now. I am gonna be closing my um, appointments for a little while as I go into transition. So um, now's the time if you wanna get in and energy work sessions are starting at $25 sliding scale for distance energy work that's been incredibly powerful. And this, is the fourth lunar this is the fourth quarter of the lunar cycle crisis in our consciousness that is now uh manifesting through the rest of this lunar cycle and we really get to uh close out um that beautiful new moon on april 22nd with which symbolized the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and i re i do really feel like that by the time we get to moon and taurus again while it's dark i think this will be a wonderful time to really embed ourselves back into the original commitment that we made with that new moon and really let it um envelop us and remember that this is like the last moment before that sprout pops up towards the sun from the soil and um, consciousness is born. And then it's a, it's a different ball game after this kiddos. I really do feel like it is. So have a great weekend. I hope that this last quarter of the cycle um, treats you as well as it can and reach out if you have any questions, if you need anything, comment if you want that uh, or like, subscribe, all of these things help the channel. And I will stop this screen share, maybe, and I will see you all on the next video.